Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm here today to talk to you about public versus private storage. We recently introduced the ability for you to store files in a separate private files library, which requires the generation of signed timed URLs before that file can be accessed. So we wanted to make some content just to talk to you a little bit about how to use these features and what the best practices are for using public versus private storage in Xano. So first, let's talk about how file storage even works in Xano. For your public files, the files are stored in your Xano public files library. The file metadata, which is like file type, file size, and a URL to the file is stored in your Xano database. And then your APIs can return those URLs to those files. Those URLs are always publicly accessible, which means that if somebody maybe saves the URL to one of those files, they can always access it until you delete it. For private files, it's a little bit different. The files are stored in a separate private files library. The metadata is still stored on your database table. However, the files cannot be accessed publicly until a new signed URL is generated. The URL also has an expiry attached to it, which means that URL will only be valid for the amount of time that you specify. Let's go through a couple of examples just to test your knowledge on whether or not you think you should be using public or private storage. For the first example, we're just going to be talking about a user's personal information. Let's say for this example that your users need to upload their driver's license to your application and you need to store that somewhere. Do you think you should be using public or private storage for that? If you said private storage, you would be correct. Because this is just super sensitive information, we want to make sure that it is never accessible outside of the means that would be appropriate. For the second example, let's talk about a chat application. So maybe in this application, your users have the ability to private message each other. And in those private messages, they can share photos. Should you be using public or private storage for that? If you said private, you would be correct. You definitely want to make sure that your users can never take the URLs for those images and share them outside of your application. For the next example, let's talk about a social media app. Let's say in the social media app that you're building, your users have the ability to post images on their profiles or in their timelines. Should you be using public or private storage for this? Well, the answer is a little bit unclear here. It kind of depends. Do you want the users to be able to link directly to the images that they post outside of the application? If so, then public storage is totally fine. However, if your application contains some sort of privacy rules that the user can set about who can view the images that they post, then you probably want to use private storage instead. The TLDR here is that private storage is super important and probably a lot more important than you think. There are a ton of reasons why you might want to utilize private storage that aren't necessarily immediately clear. Public storage files are meant to be accessible by everyone. As soon as you put a file in your public files bucket, you can basically assume that anyone has access to it at any time, just to be super safe. For private storage, it's important to make sure to utilize this for any sort of information that you do not want to be immediately accessible to everyone. Now let's hop over to Xano and I will show you how public versus private storage works in action. Okay, so here we are in Xano. I have a fresh database table here. And the first thing I want to show you is how the separation between public files and private files works. That happens at the database level. So in my database table, I'm going to create a new storage field here. We'll just choose an image. And you can see that when we create this image, we'll go ahead and give it a name. I'll call this public. And we have this new file access option here. We can choose between public file and private file. Again, public files have URLs that are always accessible no matter what. And private files require a new signed URL to be generated so we can access that file. So let's start with a public file. I'm going to go ahead and upload an image here. Okay, so there is our file. We can click on it and we see a preview as expected. Everything is good. We can even download it or copy a direct link to the image straight from the database. If we want to add a private file, let's go ahead and add another image field here. We'll call this private. And this time we're going to choose private file. 
We'll click save. Let's go ahead and upload another image. Okay, so there is our private file and you can of course see a couple of distinctions right away between public and private. In the public view, we have the preview and everything here, but on the private file, you can see we have a lock icon on the field name as well as on the image itself and we don't even get a preview for it. Now I wanna show you how this looks when you query the database to try to get links to these files. So here I am in a very simple API endpoint. All we're doing is we're querying that my files table and returning the result. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So you can see for the public file, we are returned all of the file information as well as a direct URL to this image. But if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that private field here. We still have a path. This is just where the image is stored internally, but we are not returned a direct URL to the file. If we wanted to display the public image on our front end, all we have to do is supply this URL and we're done. But if we want to display a private file, there's one more step involved. So here we've added a new step called the private file sign URL. This step will generate a new signed time expired URL for that private file. All we have to do is supply the path name, which is coming from this path value here. So we'll go ahead and add our dot notation here. There we go. And now we need to specify a TTL. The TTL is just how long this link is valid for in seconds. So right now we have it set to 30 seconds and the return as is just the name of the variable that will house that new image URL. So we'll go ahead and save and let's return that in the response instead. So when we run this again, you can see we are returned a new URL for our image. If we open this in a new tab, you can see we are delivered our image as expected, but if we wait about 30 seconds, I know it's going to be kind of hard to tell in a video, but we're going to try to access this URL again, and we'll show you what the result is after the link expires. Okay, so now I'm going to refresh this page, and you can see we are now returned an error message. It says the provided token has expired, and we can see the exact time that that signed URL expired as well. So what this means is that if somebody was even to get this new signed URL that we generated, they will not be able to access the file outside of that TTL. And that's it. That's the whole thing. That's how you work with private files in Xano. I hope you found the best practices provided and the tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, let us know down in the comments below. You can also join us on the Xano community at community.xano.com or reach out to us in support inside of Xano. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.